Good evening, class. We're going to um, move forward with Dewar's text and get into chapter 11, which um, she uh, discusses some of the socioeconomic factors of healthcare. But before we do, I want to go back in chapter 10, you know, similar to I do in every class, but especially chapter 10, because there was a lot of meat that we covered in chapter 10. And I've jotted down some notes. I want to make sure I, I go over everything um, and because it, it's very important to understand uh, the nuances that uh, we went through. Actually, started in Chapter 9 with, with competitive markets, and then it spilled over into Chapter 10, talking about uh, monopolies and oligopolies and uh, you know, public goods and the role of government. So uh, just a lot of ground to cover, and I, I want to make sure get some salient points out there for you. And let's go all the way back to chapter nine to kind of set the basis um, and talk about a competitive market. And as our, you know, our discussion went through competitive markets, uh, there are many buyers and sellers, uh, producers are, are generating a homogeneous product. There's perfect information shared by both buyers and sellers. Um, Easy interest and uh, easy entry and, and exit in the market. Um, they have a horizontal market demand curve. They are, and because it's a horizontal market demand curve, they are considered price takers. Um, and economic profits, while they may be available in the short run because of competition, because of easy entry into the market, um, entrepreneurs especially will come into those markets, into those you know, perfectly competitive markets and compete uh, for their market share will actually drive down those economic profits in the long run. So um, that's perfect competition. Let's move to monopoly. Think about monopoly, monopolistic power. Um, one seller, many buyers. Downward sloping demand curve, barriers to entry. Nobody, you know, then that's that's driving that's driven by market power, um, and the fact that there's one seller. So, based on barriers to entry, they keep competition out. They set a price that's greater than marginal cost because remember, when you're looking at that downward sloping demand curve, the way um, a monopolist sets the the equal their their concept of equilibrium price and quantity is they they find the point where the marginal revenue curve intersects of uh, the marginal cost curve. Then they read down to the horizontal axis and that gets you that gets them the a uh, quantity, the monopolistic quantity. At that point they read directly vertically up until they hit the downward sloping demand curve, the market demand curve, read it over to the vertical axis and that gets them the price. And in that case, price is going to be greater than marginal cost. And because it's greater than marginal cost in a monopolistic market, it's going to be inefficient, especially from society's perspective. Monopolists are controlling or they're, they're not producing the number of units or the, or the amount of output that would normally be produced in a, in a competitive market, and they're charging a higher price. And because of barriers to entry and, and no competition, um, market power, um, economic profits are available in the long run. And you move to the third type market, um, more of an oligopoly. Um, and they're, you know, they typically talk about a few large firms. Um, they're barriers to entry in, in an oligopoly. And the dominant firm in an oligopoly uh, can be the price setter for all of the other firms um, in that uh, market. Uh, that's driven by these oligop oligopolistic firms. So you've got competitive market, very efficient, at least from society's perspective. Uh, you've got monopoly, um, it's inefficient from society's perspective, and an oligopoly is somewhat inefficient from a society's perspective. And the authors in the text, then they talk about Pareto efficiency. And Pareto efficiency, they define it as it's impossible to prove the situation of one individual without harming someone else. And I like to think of, of, of a situation like this as just access to health care. Um, 
if, if they improve access to health care for one individual, they can't really improve that access for that individual without hurting somebody else's access. So um, you take away um, one, uh, one doctor's visit and that's going to limit the number of doctor's visits for everybody else. Great all efficiency, um, we talk about, uh, again, the three, power, the, the three pillars of economic thought. You've got opportunity cost, you've got uh, self-interest, and you've got decisions at the margin. And to drive Pareto efficiency, you're talking about marginal benefit equals marginal cost, or in the term of, you know, of a provider's office, marginal revenue equals marginal cost. At that point, you're maximizing net benefits, maximizing profits, and you're maximizing social efficiency. And so to drive Pareto efficiency, the society marginal benefit should be set equal to the society's marginal cost. And to achieve Pareto efficiency, you've got to have um, perfect information. Pareto efficiency requires certainty. And we all can make the assumption that in healthcare, because of imperfect information or asymmetric information between consumers and, and providers, um, the chances are healthcare is never going to be uh, are never going to achieve Pareto efficiency. And then we talked about public goods and public goods are non-rivalous and non-excludability. And there's a difference in, and they spend a few minutes talking about it between public goods and publicly provided goods. Public goods, again, non-rival, non-excludability. Publicly provided goods, things like school systems, parks, street lights, sewer systems, sidewalks, and they are all driven by taxation. Somebody's paying for that. Paying for that, but the public gets to use it. Um, the zip code, well, I live in Fulton County in Georgia, so um, I'm paying taxes, property taxes to Fulton County, but um, the sidewalks in the subdivision where I live, there's nothing to stop somebody from Gwinnett County or DeKalb County uh, from coming in and using those sidewalks to run or to walk their dogs or whatever. Uh, market failure, and you know, they talked just a few minutes about market failure and it'll tie back into the government's role. Market failure is due to imperfect information. That's what drives market failure. And Government's role is when they identify market failure or their perception of market failure, at that point, the government thinks they need to intervene. They need to have some regulations or laws. Um, and what they're trying to do, they're trying to optimize social efficiency and equity. Again, one of the three pillars, optimization, self-interest. That's a government's role. Public policy as again, it's funded by taxes. Taxes I pay, the taxes you pay, whether it's sales tax, whether it's income tax, whether it's property tax, those tax dollars are going to operate um, either a local government, a county government, the state government, federal government, um, and those dollars are, are funding these, these public policy decisions or these public, public uh, programs. And then lastly, um, the authors talk about the wrong decision in healthcare can be more detrimental than no decision at all. And that, that is a point that you know, I want to drive home that uh, healthcare is definitely not perfect. And the wrong decision can certainly be worse than no decision at all. At that point, um, I think I'm going to stop right there. And then when we come back, we're going to jump into um, kind of the socioeconomic problems uh, with healthcare. Talk to everybody in a few minutes.